course, I'm Shirley Bernstein, and I've been a printmaker for many years. I started in Philadelphia at the University of the Arts, which was then Philadelphia College of Art, and continued on, went to graduate school at Indiana University, and was a printmaker. Uh, the reason I was a printmaker is a little backwards, because what I really wanted to do was draw. And when I went to school, there were no majors in drawing, so the closest thing to that was printmaking. That's how I got involved with printmaking. I do still draw. I do large oil pastels, as well as the prints. And I feel that the two complement each other. Because with printmaking, it's very process-oriented. So I, I'm not comfortable spending all that time with process. I have to break out and just get in there and draw and play with the forms more. So it's, and then the prints, on the other hand, help me with more of the abstract qualities, the shapes and how things fit together. So one com really complements the other. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little about, a bit about relief printmaking, which is what I do now. It's not what I always did. I was a lithographer and I was an etcher. So I know much printmaking. But um, the three surfaces that we talk about with relief printmaking are linoleum, which most of you know from elementary school and high school. Uh, linoleum is very easily cut. You can cut it in any direction. It's soft. And then, of course, you have wood, which is what I use. And wood is, generally wood cuts are done plank grain. This is plank, like shelving. And then I also do wood engraving, which is done with the end cut of the wood. In other words, if you took the tree and cut it across this way, it's very dense wood. And I'd like to kind of pass these around so you can kind of see the surfaces. And you can also feel the difference in the softness. And you can imagine what it's like to cut these. This one is really hard. And I'll show you the tools that I use. Both linoleum and wood, you use gouge tools like these, which are also. See, they use gouge and cut into the wood. But with wood engraving, you have to go a totally different way because the wood is so hard. And I think it would be easier to see here. You actually use what are called urines, which metal engravers use. They're a solid shank rather than a roof shank. Yes? Yes. But these, you, you, it's very different because with a wood cut, you're able to really cut with your whole arm and you get a whole energy about it. Where with the wood engraving, you're much more limited. Uh, for one, you have to be seated, and the lines are very delicate, and you have to move the block to get the cut, rather than generally using your arm. So the feeling is very different. One is a lot looser than the other. Uh, although my approach to printmaking, wood engraving actually, is a lot looser than the traditional wood engraving. This would be a traditional wood engraving. And if you look in that alcove over there, you'll see that my wood engravings are a lot looser. What I do is called reduction printmaking. It's also called subtractive printmaking. And it's also called the suicide printing. <laughs> and, to take back. and that's because you have a plain block, a clean block, and what you do is, wherever you want on the block to be uh, white, you have to cut out immediately from the block. So this is a proof of the first color. There's two colors for this print, which is most of the wall there. And with, you can see that, you see that with this, you see the where the white's from? How the whites were cut out. And once you have the whites cut out, you put your first color on. And in this case, I put two colors on. It's called split found. 
so that I could get a lighter, different shade on the top than the bottom. I'm trying to get as much out of each run through the press as I can. So that was the first color. Then, wherever I want that color to come through on the print, I have to cut away. So that, that will re be revealed in the next printing. And the next color that went over that were these two colors. Went over the yellows. So now we're starting to build up a palette here. And then the last colors were the horizon and the sky. So you can see how it all comes together. This appeals to me. I have a kind of mathematical mind logic I like. And so you have to figure all this stuff out. And they say suicide because if you don't figure it out, you can cut away something that you want to be there, so forth. So you have to also be flexible and adjust your image to accommodate for any kind of discrepancies that you may get. So are there any questions? Yes. What kind of press do you use? I have an old Dickerson combination press. Uh, but all of this work could be done with, without a press with rubbing the back with a wooden spoon to get the pressure. A press is not necessary, but I like it, it makes it a lot easier, especially if you're printing an edition. And you have to realize that most of my prints go through the press like maybe five, six times. So that would be a lot of elbow press. Mm. Any other questions? Yes. Do you have a preference for uh, the material that you're using? I mean, you, you have, we're showing an array of surfaces that you carve into. I mean, is there one that you like better than, than another? Why is that? Well, I do like the wood cut. Mm -hmm. I like the physical cutting of it. I like the energy that you can put into the wood through cutting. Mm -hmm. So I, I do you have, like, a, you have a harder and a softer wood. I like the softer, mm -hmm. the plank grain. But I do do the wood engraving too because it does, it's more restrictive and you have to really, when you're doing a wood engraving, you really have to consider both sides of the line, which to me is something very important and it's important in drawing as well. So it feeds on the drawing as well. Yes? What inks do you use? I use graphic chemical and I use oil base. Um, I've never had much success with water base, and when I found out that vegetable oil is a wonderful cleanup, I'm very pleased with oil base. Mm. And something like this, do you plan out the colors before you actually print it? Like, do you know this is going to be pretty much the result of what you were doing? Well, I do have a color idea when I start, and I just discovered a nice little shortcut for myself. It's very helpful. I have started using Pantone color swatches because if I know that I want a particular, I want a blue, but I'm not sure whether I want it to be warm or cool or light or dark, I take those swatches and I put them right up on, on the proof and I see what color will work. And that, that way I have a starting point when I go down to mix my inks. Are you using opaque inks at that yes, point? Yes, I am. Yeah, most of the ink you would use would be opaque because transparency would match the colors if you laid them down. Right, it would change the colors yeah. from what would come <clears throat> through from the, the underneath colors. So in this one, would your final color would have been black? Uh, for instance? Yes, um, I thought it was being really smart and I bought some permanent uh, color markers, the Sharpies, and I thought I could like get color areas. I thought, oh, this is cool. But they, they come up in the paper. They're not permanent. They're, they say they're permanent, but they're not. But so I use India ink. And I own a brush. And I plan out on the wood before I even start cutting. So did you come out like you originally intended? Or do you evolve? <laughs> I think it evolves. I have to be honest. It evolves. <laughs> oh, so. The general idea is there, pretty much. Sometimes they just click, and they just exactly what I thought, but not always. <laughs>
Any other questions? Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs>